Good morning, everyone. Um, you are in the right location. Welcome to the GIS Crash Analysis Tool GCAT webinar. Um, my name is Paula Hyman from the Ohio LTAP Center. We're going to wait just a few minutes to give people an opportunity to join here, um, and then we'll give you some instructions and get started. So just bear with us. We're going to wait uh, probably about one, another minute here before we get started. Okay, um, again, this is the GIS Crash Analysis Tool um, GCAT webinar. My name is Paula Hyman from the Ohio LTAP Center. Just wanna cover a few housekeeping items with you. If you have questions throughout this presentation, I ask that you please put them in the questions box. Um, our presenter will address your questions periodically throughout the presentation. So if you will, please, uh, those of you who are on, please locate that questions pod, type a quick hello or hi uh, in there just to make sure you know where it's located, how it functions. Um, then there's a um, handout section. In the handout section, today's handouts are available for download. If for some reason you are unable to download the handouts, just put your email address into that questions box and I will personally email those out to you. Um, we will be attempting to record this webinar. Pending successful recording, all attendees will receive an email with access to this recording. I wanna thank you in advance for your participation. And with that, I'm gonna pass things off to Caroline Griffith, safety engineer with the Highway Safety Program. Caroline. Thank you, Paula. Good morning, everyone. Um, I, not, like Paula said, my name is Caroline Griffith. I am an engineer with the Highway Safety Program. Uh, I work with the uh, with GCAT, ECAT, and all the other CATs um, in our program. So today's webinar is going to give you a basic example of uh, GCAT and how it works, what it does, and how it can work for you. Um, I'm going to go over just an overview uh, of it and go over the handouts that are in the uh, in the docket. So if you want to have those up and available for you while I go over them, that could be helpful. And like Paula said, if you have any questions throughout this, please type them in the pod. Um, I'll be taking, I'll be stopping periodically um, to take to take questions. And uh, Paula, again, if, if you need to, please interrupt me so I can uh, answer those. So what is GCAT? So GCAT stands for the GIS Crash Analysis Tool. Um, G, the GCAT will go into something called the CAM tool or the crash analysis, analysis module tool, and I'll show you how to use those later. So the purpose of GCAT is to provide a convenient highway safety crash analysis tool for ODOT, MPOs, county engineers, law enforcement, safety consultants, uh, and anyone else who uses crash data in their day-to-day -day, day -day lives. And GCAT is located on our ODOT TIMS website. I'll show you how to access that. The CAM tool is also available there, and it's available on our um, HSIP website, which is uh, the Highway Safety Improvement Program. So here's how, here's, once we get into GCAT, this is what it's going to look like, especially in the map viewer. So um, you, we are going to be able to select uh, different values, different data values. Uh, for whatever you're looking to do, and we're going to be able to pop it up in a map. So there'll be two two different ways to, to show it. Uh, the map viewer will show a bunch of little dots. Uh, each color dot references a, a type of crash, whether it be a fatality, a serious injury, or a, a property damage only crash, etc. 
Um, we are able to zoom in on these crashes within a county or within a city, within a township, within a very in, within various locations, and select out. Um, specific areas that we're interested in looking at. So in this example, uh, we're in a county, we zoom in and we want a specific road segment and we're able to highlight that road, road segment. Once we get the data from GCAT, uh, we are able to put it into a CAM tool. The CAM tool, um, as, uh, as you'll see in a little bit, you'll, you're able to uh, import the data from, from GCAT. Uh, push a couple buttons, it runs an analysis, and it pops up all these nice little data tables that summarizes all the crash information for you. So you don't have to do any of that manually. It automatically um, will, will summarize anything that you can think of. Um, and not only does it in, in data tables, but it also does a graphical analysis with histograms and um, different graphs, charts and graphs. So one of the handouts that is in the docket is our GCAT summary um, page. If for any reason while I'm going through this, you don't um, understand or you can't remember, this, this little eight step program, this little eight step guide here, keep it simple. This is basically what we're gonna go through throughout uh, the next hour or so. So the first thing we're gonna do is, uh, one, and, I'll, and I'm gonna step through this, um, through, through uh, GCAT here in just a moment. Uh, you'll be required to select um, something from the crash data search page. So that's something has to be at least a year and a county. Um, you can also select specific roadways if you know exactly where you're at and you know the NLF ID, um, or if you know the, um, the, the uh, log points or anything like that. So the NLF ID, for those of you that haven't heard that um, phrase before, it's a network linear feature identification. Um, and that's just how we reference our roadways uh, in the state of Ohio. So the next thing will be, uh, you can select view and map, or you can select download once you have everything chosen off of that page. So view and map is gonna be just like I showed you a moment ago, um, and you'll be able to select data from a, a specific location, or you can download the, the data directly. If you don't need to see where you're at and you do already know that you just want a whole county's worth of data for a, a year or a given month in a year, you can just download that data directly and it'll pop up in a CSV file and you won't even have to worry about going through the map viewer. Um, if you do pick on view and map, uh, you can zoom into an area, select, and I'll show you how to do this. You can draw a polygon or a circle around the, the, the wanted area. Uh, like search and then export and uh, you'll be able to see the csv file it'll pop up you can also download the cam tool um uh, import import your csv into the cam tool and run the data analysis so i will be going through each of these steps um piece by piece and showing you exactly what that looks like and here it is again for <laughs> in, in a bigger version um, so if uh, we also have the GCAT, uh, GCAT located at a couple different locations, you, and I'll show you how to get there via several different ways. Um, this is on our uh, main highway safety uh, page. You can select in the, the highlighted red box that shows where you can download the CAM tool. Um, the, the information that I put in the docket, you can download those if for some reason you lose those files. You can also, uh, there's also a direct link to GCAT from there. So well, how, how GCAT works and how it gets its data is we work with uh, the uh, Department of Public Safety and other law enforcement agencies throughout the state. Uh, to collect crash data. So anytime there's a crash report, the officer will fill out this traffic crash report, um, which I've also pro provided you a blank copy of in case you're interested in how the, the data works and, and what the numerics mean before you process the data in the CAM tool. Um, so each officer will fill these out. They get It gets taken into um, their data system and then supplied to us. So this is the basic process of how that works. So the crash data gets collected by the officer. Um, uh, the the reports are submitted are then submitted to DPS uh, to to the state registry. So it goes from uh, any any local officers and and gets 
uh, reported directly to ODPS's uh, crash, crash logs. Uh, that data is then sent from ODPS to ODOT, and then ODOT sends the crash data to various tools such as GCAT um, for our data use and analysis. So that's the basic breakdown and overview of how this works. So I'm going to so I'm going to stop here before I actually get into the meat and potatoes of everything. Does anybody have any questions? There are no questions in the questions pod. OK, perfect. I didn't figure because we haven't actually got the parts where I need to explain everything a little bit better. So all right, I'm going to pop out of here. So let's say uh, the first thing we should go over is how OK. Before we even get to GCAT, how do you get access to GCAT? So there are a couple of different ways. If you are, I'll make this a little bit smaller so you can see it. OK, so if you're an internal ODOT person needing GCAT access, uh, email me directly. My, my email is uh, at the top of this page, highlighted in blue, says ODOT employees, please email me to gain access. Um, if you are a non-ODOT employee, there's a second link here called My ODOT. You will need to request a My ODOT account. Um, you will need to request a basic account. There are some drop-down menus on how to request this once you enter that once you enter that link, um, and you'll need to select GIS Crash Analysis Tool. What then happens is I get an email stating that someone has requested access. Um, I review it and then I will either approve or deny based on um, different criteria. And it's usually approved. Uh, does anybody have any questions about how to gain access or if they're unsure if they have access? No. Um, yes. So we have is this presentation being recorded? Yes, the presentation is being recorded um, and it will be provided to you after the session. Um, as long as it successfully records, we will send that out to you via email. But that's the only question we have right now, Carolyn. Okay, perfect. OK, cool. So if you do, um, if you do end up having questions after this about how to get access or if for some reason you know you have access, but you can't log in, let me know. There's a couple of tips, tips and tricks. I will say that GCAT plays better in Google Chrome than it does Internet Explorer. So if you're having issues, definitely check, check your web browser and make sure you're using Chrome. Um, instead of Internet Explorer, Firefox, or, or something else. Okay, so now that we've got access, how do we actually get to GCAT? So there's a couple of different ways. So the first way that's pretty easy, you can just type in, I'll just type in GCAT ODOT and hit the enter button. And um, there's a couple of different pages. If you click on the first link uh, for this, what it's going to take you to, is our highway safety page, the page that I showed you earlier, um, where you can have access to each of these um, files. The CAM tool, um, how to get access, uh, the training document that's also attached to the document, and anything else that you might have questions about. The second way is the second link, and it will take you directly to our GCAT main page. So from here, if you need access, you can go down here to hit uh, need GCAT user account, new user. When you click on the new user, it's just going to bring up that PDF that I showed you um, about how to get access. It will just bring this fella up. So um, just follow those instructions and you should be able to get access, no problem. Once you do have access, you're going to click the login button. Now, when I click the login button where I'm an internal user, it's automatically going to log me in. For anyone that's an external ODOT user, what's going to happen is when you hit login, it's going to pop up with a traditional login box uh, where you'll need to enter in your username and password. Your username will need to be um, formatted with ODOT online backslash your username. And I believe that's in the uh, in the in the, the uh, access document. If it isn't, I will add it. Yeah, it might not be on here. Um, but you will need to enter it in ODOT online backslash and then your username. Um, if you have any issues with that, 
please shoot me an email, call me. I'm more than happy to help you. So I'm gonna click log in here. Now, once you're logged in, it's going to bring up a page that looks just like this. It's the crash data search page. Um, so you're going to be able to go through each of these tabs and select different criteria. Um, so I'm going to go through each of those and show you exactly what's underneath them. So when occurred, you can either choose your meth. Now, remember when we first started this webinar, I stated that if you're going to do um, a crash data search, you at least need to have a year and a county. Um, because if you try to search for a, a whole year's worth of data, we have almost 300 crashes, 300,000 crashes a year or so. Um, so we're not going to be able to, that's too much data for the system to process. So you're not going to be able to download all of that. So you're going to need to refine it just a little bit to at least select one or two counties. So when you're here, you can select each of the, the years. So if you want multiple years of data, if you just want a single year, um, you're able to do that. Uh, the 2020 data is current-ish. Uh, we try we try to keep it as updated as possible. Um, it will not be fully updated until about March of the following year. So any any current year uh, will not be fully updated and fully um, formed until March or April of the following year. Um, so once you select it, you can select a year. You can select a month. So you do not have to select a month. If you select a year, it will give you the full year's worth of data. However, if you would like to see um, data, crash data in a given year or a given set of years in just the summer months, then you're able to go in there, select your years and select June, July, and August. Um, and you'll be able to see the, the, the data for the summer months. The next area is crash details. So you're able to select different crash types. So these are head-on collisions or left-turning collisions, animal crashes, things like that. So if you know that you're specifically wanting to study a specific type of crash in your area or see how many of these types of crashes are in your area, you're able to um, filter it by this. You're also able to do crash severity. So based on our one to five level of fatalities to property damage only, you're able to analyze different types of, uh, of crash severity and, and crash levels. Um, so say if you wanna just do fatal crashes, fa fatal crashes that occurred for left turns in the month of July, you're able to see that. If, if you're into it, this, this, this um, search box right here gets used very, very little. Because typically, if you know a document number, you already have the crash report. So you don't really need to um, even do this unless you want to do it. Um, uh, well, you don't you, you probably won't be needing this as much. Um, if you do, if you do, what you'll have to do is it's a 13 character number usually starts with the year um, and you can type those in if you know the dog, if you know specific document numbers. But again, that gets very that it's used very rarely. So emphasis areas are really for our um, strategic highway safety plan and, and in our highway safety improvement program, we have uh, these emphasis areas that we calculate every year and we have to report on every five years. Um, so if you want to see any of these, these are very specific. They're either alcohol related, drug related, speed, work zone, motorcycle, pedestrian, older driver, younger driver. There's several different categories. So if you're interested in seeing any of that, you're able to. And then you're also able to see um, to select if you wanted to select a certain type of vehicle. So either a passenger car or a truck or a van or school buses or anything like that, you're able to select specific types of units here. This gets used very, very uh, rarely as well, but if you want to see um, specific types of buses, um, if fire or mi uh, military, uh, anything like that, th you can uh, view that here. Traffic control, if you want to analyze all of the roundabouts in your area, you can see that. Or if, if you want to see, see the crashes that occur where there are no stop controls, you can see that here. Uh, contributing circumstances, this gets used very rarely, but if you, it's just kind of more digging 
digging in deep to kind of figure out, okay, this is this is exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, what did the driver do to uh, cause this crash? So was it improper passing? Did they drive off the road? Did they go left to center? Did they fail, fail to yield? Something like that. Um, sequence of events is what what happened and in what order did it happen? So did did a jackknife occur and cause this? Uh, was there a run off the road to cause this? Did someone cross the median? So so what and when happened? And then of course finally uh, this is your other required piece of information that you need. You need to select a crash location. So if you know you want them at certain types of intersections, you can select an intersect. You can select the type of intersection from crash, crash location. Uh, you can also select ramps, uh, crossovers, driveways. Um, most of the time, people just leave this blank. Uh, county. So you will have to select the county. You can dive deeper. So once you select the county, you can select the village or city within that county or a township or uh, within that county. So, so you can kind of get really, really, really specific with these uh, GCAT analyses. If you know exactly where you have these crashes and exactly the area that you're wanting to search, so like I said, here's the NLFID. Uh, if you hit the search button for NLFID, you're able to choose a county. Uh, once you choose a county, the routes populate within that county. So these are all the routes within Adams County. So if you pick one of those, and then it gives you the minimum value and maximum value of the log points. So log points are similar to mile markers. They're, they're not quite mile markers, but they do tell you how long the uh, route is. It begins at zero and it goes to 29.263 miles. So if you know exactly where along US 52 in Adams County you want to search for, you can enter that, you can enter that in. So before I do an example, does anybody have any questions about um, th these data fields? I don't have uh, anything in the box just yet. Okay, well, we'll, we'll just keep on boogieing along. Okay, so I'm going to go through and do an example. So, uh, and just a quick mention, if you do decide just to click a year and a county, you will get all of the above information that I just mentioned. So everything regarding drugs, alcohol, uh, bicycle, pedestrian, jackknife, uh, an intersection, not an intersection, anything that was encompassed in this that you didn't select, you will get. It's just that once you do click one of these um, specific items, it, it narrows down your search even further. So we're gonna go 2019. And we're just going to select the county. Let's do Dark County. Okay, so I've selected these two items. As you can see over to the right, um, there is a little bubble that says one and one. Uh, under one occurred, the zero changed to a one, and under location, the zero changed to a one. If you have these things all closed up and you don't know what you have selected, you at least know where you have things selected at um, because they'll, they'll, they will show up as a number and show you how many things you have selected. So there's a couple, like I mentioned before, there's a couple of different ways to, to do this. The first way I'm going to show you is just the download button. So you've got view and map and download here at the very bottom. And you also have these at the very, very top. You see them being highlighted. So I'm going to hit download. Once you down, hit the download button, um, it'll pop up this little query results box. Um, it will tell you how many crashes are in your selection. Uh, so in this case, we have 1,118 crashes in the selection. Um, and you can either hit download or close. So you're like, oh, okay, I bet now I know how many I have. Uh, do I really want to, do I really want to just download all of it or do I want to go in and, and pick specific bits? Uh, so you can download this, and once you download it, I'll show you what, what the CSV looks like in a, in a little bit. Or you can view in map. Now, once you hit view in map, it's also going to come up with the query results to tell you exactly how many there were. Um, and this time, we're going to hit the view in map button. Now, 
now it will zoom so it brings up the the it brings up the map it zooms into the location that where we're wanting to look at and where we just uh had uh picked the crashes from uh you can drag this map around you can zoom in you can zoom out and do all kinds of other different things so okay we've got dark county here that looks like a lot of different uh little little bubbles um but we know specifically where we're wanting to go to so we zoom in we're going to zoom in on greenville we're going to zoom in on an intersection in greenville okay so we want this intersection of broadway street and state route 502 we know this is for the intersection we are wanting to um analyze so over to the right we have a box it's the filter crash events by graphic. If you, you can navigate through each of these uh, fellows up here and they do different things. The only time you will get this crash analysis tools button is when you have gone through GCAT. Otherwise, this button in Tim's will not show up. So this is the button we'll be using today. Um, in order to analyze this, we are wanting to draw either a circle or a line around this intersection so we're going to do a circle you can also do a point um, a point in a circle do very similar things we'll start with point the buffer graphic so the buffer will be um, in this in this case the um, radius of how far out from the center of the point that you click will go so it's generally set to 250 feet you can change this if you want it to be a little bit further or if you need it closer in for some reason um, so i usually just leave it at the 250 feet you will select draw once you select draw the button will be highlighted it says drawing go to hover over the map the go to hover over the map and you'll get this little crosshairs button Try to focus it in uh, over the middle point of wherever you're wanting to to go and hit uh, and just click it. It will draw a little red ring circle around the intersection that you're wanting to, to analyze. Once you click it, you hit the search button. It'll zoom directly into to the entire uh, intersection or area. Down here at the bottom, it will tell you exactly how many crashes are within that area. So we have eight crashes. And I can drag this guy up. And you'll be able to see that there are eight crashes. So if these are the eight crashes that we're wanting to do, you can export this data uh, to Excel, to a KMZ if you want to put it in a mapping tool. Uh, you can also do it with a shape file or geo database. So this is more for GIS and this is uh, for, for more for uh, the CAM tool and um, and analyzing the data numerically. So we can also do the same thing. So I'm going to clear I'm gonna clear this fellow. So say, OK, well, we had that intersection, but I need actually not this intersection, but this this part of Broadway Street. So instead of doing a point, we're going to then do a line. Uh, you can the, so the buffer here is going to be um, again a radius of 250 feet, but it's going to be from either side of the roadway. So hit draw, and you're going to click in one location, and it will allow you to draw. So just click once, and you can drag this line to wherever else you want it to be, and then double click and it will select a uh, the line that you just had that you just drew with a 250 foot radius around it again you can change this radius if you need to or hit search again okay and it selects all these data these records and now it tells us that we have 29 records here um, again, you can go and you can hit uh, export data to get either an Excel, a KMZ, shapefile, or geodatabase. So I'm going to pause here for a moment. Does anyone have any questions? No questions in the box. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to export this data. 
And I wanna export it to Excel because the CAM tool only accepts um, Excel or uh, CSV files. Okay. After I hit uh, export and it and it uh, gets it ready to download, it'll pop up as a green download button. You then have to click that again, and it will pop up down here in your downloads. So we're going to open him up. Once you download these um, these crash events, so say filter crash events, um, you are able to see each of these. Um, and it's got object ID, which is just a unique identifier, and the document number, which is the document number unique identifier of the crash report, um, a link to the crash report. So you're able to put this into um, your search bar in your um, in, in Google Chrome or in Internet Explorer, and you're able to see the crash report. So let me show you that real quick. Just what one of these looks like. So you're able to see the full crash report, um, where it occurred, uh, the lat long, and, and how this is filled out. And this information is what we take into GCAT. Um, you also get, uh, sometimes you'll get a fancy drawing, sometimes you'll get a hand drawing, uh, and a written response as to what happened. And so you're able to look at each of these and kind of draw your own conclusions if, if you need to go into that much depth. Otherwise, each of these columns uh, represents um, one of the attributes that we were able to select in GCAT. So there is a ton. So as you and as you can see, a lot of these are numeric. So you you might be very confused. You might say, "Well, I don't know what a code four is for crash severity," or um, I don't know what a facility, what facility type two is. Um, that's okay. Uh, these, this Excel file or the CSV file um, takes these codes, and once you put them into the CAM tool, it translates them into English. So it's so so. Now I'm going to show you how to upload this file with all this data in it um, and put it into. Uh, um, into readable into a readable format so i already have one saved so well, let's start to uh, let's go back here so okay so you've got you've got your data downloaded and now we need to download a cam tool so i showed you there's a couple places to download the cam tool from this is one of them so if you click this button up here you hit cam tool excel it will download a cam tool Okay, and here's what the can tool looks like. So I've already got one one save that I will work off of. So I'm going to close this guy out. This and I will go through and show you what um, a proper one looks like. Okay, so this is what the can tool looks like whenever you um, go to download it. It's going to have a bunch of different boxes here. It's going to say uh, crash analysis module, cam tool up at the top. Um, a lot of different clickable buttons. Really, the only one that you're going to need to worry about uh, will be this this tannish looking one with the blue lettering. So click the open analysis toolbox or press control plus T. If you click this fella, what's going to happen is it's going to open a dialog box. This dialog box also has a bunch of different buttons you can push, and this is how we're going to import our data. So we're going so when you're ready to import, uh, you you click to open the analysis toolbox. And then we're going to click this bright yellow button. It says Tim's GCAT import. It says select Tim's GCAT file, export file. Yep. So I already have this one downloaded. It's of US 40 in Franklin County. So I'm going to just click him and hit open. And it takes it a couple, couple seconds to think 
and to download. Okay, so it flickers, it flickers at the at the bottom. But then once it flickers, all of your data is uploaded here to the into the correct format. Um, and now you're able to see anything that was a, a number is now translated. Now, okay, so this is all fun and dandy, uh, but it's still just a table. We can't do much about it, uh, to do much with this unless you want to do something manually. So what's next? All right, so we're going to click to open this again. And the next tab we're going to go to is the analysis tab. So this is where the magic happens, so to speak. So we've got these three di different buttons. We're going to run each of these to uh, populate the analysis and the graphics and the data, ta data tables. Okay, and it is kind of uh, a little nuancy. You do have to go back and click this each time so for some of them. And for some things it closes, so for some things it closes out the, the dialog box, for other things it doesn't. Um, but you just have to go back each time and hit the, <clears throat> hit the next run button. Okay, <clears throat> so now we did only have these few little yellow, these few little yellow tabs, but we've now uploaded all of these other, these other tabs. So I'm going to go through these and show you a little bit about what they are. So here's our full crash data. This is the data that we just uploaded. Um, our crash analysis uh, will show us if you select multiple years, there'll be multiple years here. Um, so it's just total crashes, fatalities and serious injuries in this um, selection of 39 crashes. We didn't have any fatalities or serious injuries. If we did, they would have been updated right here. Uh, and then that just shows you the total crashes. If we had selected multiple years, there would have been multiple points on here. As we scroll down, we can see the types of crashes, so rear end, size white passing, and these will filter um, uh, largest to smallest, so the most occurring to the least occurring of the types of crashes, um, and the 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 uh, crash level injury. So most of them were PDO or no injury. We had some injury possible and some minor injury suspected. Uh, and then it also shows that in a graphic. Uh, we've got a few more things that we can show here, uh, road condition, hour of day, uh, type of weather, if the weather is provided, the month that these occurred in, um, day and week, um, different types of intersections or crash locations, uh, if uh, the road contour, so if it was straight or was there curves or was there, uh, was there horizontal vertical curves or is it straight and level. And then we also have um, graphs and charts here that show the different crashes by location, road contour, road conditions, and weather. So these, if you've used GCAT before, um, this might be a little bit new, uh, look, look a little bit different. It is the same data as this. So this is our, uh, what we call the legacy data. So when I was populating uh, the data in the analysis tabs, there was that bright orange button called legacy. This is what this is. So this is the exact same information you're going to get in crash analysis. It just, it just looks a little different. So um, we will be phasing this out over time and using, using this, but for right now we have both. Um, this, this is for unit one. So this will be the, the usually the at fault driver is the unit one driver usually. Um, so if you're wanting to analyze that, uh, we have the different types of the type of unit that it was, uh, if they struck an object, special function of that, of that vehicle, uh, their contributing circumstances and everything else that we went through. Emphasis area, um, this is more, in, this, this has to do with each of those, uh, the emphasis areas that I, that I mentioned earlier. These will populate based on uh, fatalities and serious injuries only, since the information that we gathered for this specific site type didn't have any fatalities or serious injury, these are all going to be zero. 
Um, so this is the site average versus the statewide average for crash severity types. Um, same with uh, same by crash types in general. So you'll be able to see the site average versus the statewide average for uh, fatalities, serious injuries, and total crashes. Um, and this is crash tree. This um, I've not used and it doesn't give very much use, so I wouldn't particularly worry about that one. Um, so these are our legacy data bits. So if you've used GCAT before, you've probably seen these guys. Crash data and full crash data are very, very similar. They have all the same information. They're just sorted a little bit differently. Data analysis is the same as crash analysis. And the graphics here should be the same as the graphics and crash analysis. So the last thing that, so I'm gonna pause here for just a second before we go on to the next uh, piece. Do we have any questions about how to access this, how to get these, what anything means? I don't see any questions in the questions pod. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna go back to full crash data. So the last thing that we do um, before, um, before we consider this analysis done is sometimes uh, we like to do what we call a crash diagram. And so typically you'll do these at intersections. You can also do them along a roadway, um, but th this, this works best for intersections. Since I selected a, uh, a road, just a roadway, um, it might not work super duper well, but we will try it anyway. Um, you can also select, so you can select, this is what it will look like up in the top left hand corner collision diagramming toolbar it'll be an intersection and it will try to, its best to figure out where these crashes occurred um in in this intersection or location so if it was to the north south east or west and the type of crash that it was so if it was left turning if it was an animal something like that you can select to show different types of data on this if you want um, some people like to show what type of road condition it was um, or the year if we have multiple years, um, the severity. So if we want to know if it was a fatality, serious injury or PDO, you can select this. Um, I'm just going to leave it checked as is. So once you've selected everything you want to show on this uh, crash, uh, crash collision diagram, you hit this blue button up at the top that says generate collision diagram and it takes a second. So it likes to think about it um, because what it's doing is it's taking all this data and it is creating a graphic to show exactly what these um, crashes look like, where they're located and the types of crashes that we have. If it's successful, which it should be most of the time, um, you will get this little dialog box that says a diagram is complete with an exclamation point. And you should get something that looks like this. So you can see that uh, there, there can be angle crashes, uh, le uh, left turning crashes, rear ends, animals, um, all kinds of different ones. And if you're not certain what some of these are, over here to the right is a little, um, a little box that tells you exactly what each of these type crash types uh, are um, graphically. So you're able to see. You're also able to, if you want to, overlay a uh, a picture of your um, of your specific intersection or roadway um, onto this, so that we, that you can see it better and make it more real real to um, your your situation. Okay. Does anybody have any last questions? That is pretty much it on how to access GCAT. Uh, what GCAT does, how you can get the data, put it into the CAM tool, and make the data work for you. We don't have anything in the in the questions pod. Okay, awesome. Well, we will end a little early then, if that's okay, I reckon. But uh, if you do have any questions, if you uh, start getting into this and maybe something's not making sense or something's not working for you, or um, you're having trouble getting access or logging in, Please don't do not hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, I'm more than more than happy to help get you access and, and figure out why you might be having issues. 
All right, Caroline, well, thank you so much. Um, we, are, again, are going to try to um, share this recording after this is finished. Um, if there are no further qu oh, we have one question. Contact person for questions related to C um, GCAT. Caroline, can you put your contact info up for them? Oh, for sure, absolutely. Right here. There is my email address. I'm going to go ahead and type that in the chat box for everybody. All righty. Well, if um, anybody has any other questions or needs anything else, please don't uh, hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, and I appreciate your time today. Thank you, Caroline. All right, thank you.